All of the behaviors we have discussed so far were observed from experiments with air, which is not a pure substance but happens to be a mixture of gases. Dry air, for instance, is a mixture containing nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide, and a few other gases in trace amounts. The ideal gas law holds for virtually any gas, whether pure or a mixture, at ordinary conditions for two reasons. One, gases mix homogeneously in any proportions. In other words, they form solutions. Two, each gas in a mixture behaves as if it were the only gas present. Of course, all this is assuming there are no chemical reactions or interactions taking place. Whenever we use the blanket term ideal gas, the underlying assumption is that the molecules of the gas do not interact, as in, they neither attract each other nor do they repel each other. Further, each of the components in an ideal gas mixture acts independently of the others. For instance, the nitrogen molecules in an air sample exact a certain very specific 78% of the total pressure. Now, this is completely independent of the other gases present in the mixture. Likewise, the oxygen molecules in the air sample exactly exert a pressure of 21% of the total pressure, which is again very specific and completely independent of the other gases present. We define the pressure due to any individual component in a gas mixture as its partial pressure Pi. We can calculate the partial pressure from the ideal gas law by assuming that each gas component acts independently. Consider a mixture of gases in a volume V at temperature T. The total number of moles of the gases, Nt, is the sum of the number of moles of each of the constituent gases, as in we have Nt equals N1 plus N2 and so on. For a moment, let us keep this equation aside. In the ideal gas approximation, all molecular sizes and interactions are considered to be negligible. So the contribution of each molecule to the equation of state is equal, irrespective of the molecular type. Thus, the total pressure Pt of an ideal gas mixture at a fixed volume V and temperature T will depend only upon the number of moles as in Nt and not on the specific composition. In other words, the pressure Pt is given by this equation as in Nt Rt by V. Now within this equation, if we substitute the previous one, we get to expand the expression for Pt in terms of Pt equals this component plus this component and so on. The individual terms in the right hand side of this equation represent the partial pressures of each component of the gas or the pressures that each gas would exert if it were present alone in the container. Thus, the total pressure of the ideal gas mixture is the sum of the partial pressures of the individual components of the gases. The partial pressure of any particular component I in the mixture is given by Pi equals Ni Rt times V. If you recall the overall equation of state as in the ideal gas expression, we know that the total pressure Pt is given by Nt Rt by V. Thus, using these two equations, we can establish a relationship between the partial pressure of the component I and the total pressure Pt. As in, Pi equals Ni by the total number of moles Nt, the whole thing multiplied by the total pressure Pt. But Ni by Nt is the mole fraction of the component I, and thus we get Pi equals chi i times the total pressure Pt, where the Greek symbol chi i refers to the mole fraction of the component i. We could illustrate the Dalton's law of partial pressures by means of this visual. Here, we have two different gases, each inside a jar having the same volume. We also keep the temperature constant and as you can see, the jars are similar in every possible way except that the pressure readings in each of the jars is different. Obviously, we have designed this experiment such that the number of moles in these two jars happen to be different. Dalton's law predicts that if we had a similar jar under the same conditions of volume and temperature as before, such that both these gases are present in same quantities, 
then the pressure of the gas mixture will be the same as the sum of these two pressures. So the net pressure is the sum of the pressure as if these two gases are present under the same conditions in the same jar.